Hello and welcome everybody. I am joined by Lisa Carney from Halvick Solutions over Hello. in Monica. Hi Lisa, how are you? Very good, very good. <laughs> good. So we're talking pelvic floor today and breathing and back pain. Okay, so this is our wee topic because 80% of the world have back pain and I'm not sure how many people are actually thinking about how much down below is going to impact that. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> totally. It's definitely the missing link. Like we see so many people in the clinic who have had um, been to all sorts of therapists and uh, nobody's really acknowledged that the pelvic floor is a key contributor to your um, your deep stabilizing system and your back pain. So um, yeah. we find that we can really turn people around by addressing the uh, the pelvic floor as part of the whole body. What do you... <laughs> Absolutely. So I, um, I'm a physio, you're a physio, and people that have, don't know us, um, I am uh, a, more a breathing physio, but I still work on the musculoskeletal system. So I kind of work at that top end, and you've got the bottom end of the pelvic floor. But the great thing the is, they, you got the bottom end, you can keep that end. Um, but the great thing is, they work in so much uh, coherence, and they should, but often they're not. And that dysregulation between them can make a big difference to contributing to why the body is experiencing back pain in the first place. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So the pelvic floor is a is a it plays a massive role and if it's weakened by childbirth or um, getting older or even it can be too tight and yeah. uh, those muscles, those pelvic floor muscles can get so tight on lots of people and they um, that can certainly trigger off back pain. Um, and there's other reasons for back pain actually that are kind of missed as well. Like um, sometimes if you've got a, a uterus prolapse, it can cause a really mm. dragging, heavy feeling into the back. And uh, so it's, it's often missed by general therapists who, um, who are looking for a problem with the spine or the, the joints and the muscles. So... Yeah, yeah. So to, to, to treat a, a back pain um, client uh, like the full body, then the pelvic floor needs to be assessed properly and incorporated mm. as part of the rehabilitation program. Mm. Absolutely. So if it's too tight, it needs relaxing. If it's not tight enough, then it needs to, be, uh, needs to be strengthened up so that it can really respond to the forces that you're putting on your body. Yeah, but the, so what's the pelvic floor do? Like we could talk about the pelvic floor muscles and where they are because then people can understand um, a bit yeah, more I can about what show happens. You. I will show me, example A. Uh, I won't show you my pelvic floor, but <laughs> I'll show you our pelvic floor. <laughs> so the pelvic floor muscles, they sit inside the pelvis here. So you've got your pelvis here. Here's your back, all the spine coming up. And all of these muscles, so you've got the... The, the muscles, they connect into the coccyx here at the back mm -hmm. and they just form this beautiful support hammock, like a, like a trampoline underneath. So they wrap around the, the vagina, but then they provide the support for down below. So as walking upright humans, <laughs> that takes a fair load all through the day, those pelvic floor muscles, just by the fact yep. that we walk upright. So... Um, but when you look at the spine here, these muscles actually come in and connect into part of the spine. And mm. so when, uh, when you have um, any problems with movement or stiffness through the spine or um, movement or like stiffness through the pelvic floor, then other things have to compensate to, uh, to, to make that work smoothly to keep your team working. So the pelvic floor is the bottom of the, the, the floor. You've got the abdominals which connect up here all the way around here and come up forming the wall. And then you've got all the back muscles that connect up here all forming the other wall. And at the top, you've got your roof of the diaphragm. And those guys work together as a team. The, you, you, one is nothing without the other. So, yeah. so yeah. So to be able to really truly address those problems, those teammates need to be working like a well-oiled bike. Absolutely. <laughs> if one, if one of the gears in the team is not working, then uh, the the there's a, going to be a problem somewhere. Yeah, and the overcompensation of it too. So sometimes I think there's been uh, misconceptions about how we're supposed to train up. Um, and that's come from a lot of the research that was actually misinterpreted as well about what these deep muscles are supposed to do. And actually, we're not meant to suck and hollow and pull in because then we can't breathe, and then the pressure goes, squeezes in the middle and goes down and up. 
we're actually meant to be able to expand and stabilize and have that pressure but support it and control that that pressure in there exactly and i have this conversation time and time again with trainers personal trainers yeah. and like just and everybody actually about mm -hmm. and, and and physios we're guilty we taught that oh, yeah. for a long time right like we taught like pull in your core and it'll stabilize your ex you know stabilize your back so that you can move around but what we know now about this you know updated research it's actually mm -hmm. Not you're not going to lock down a teammate by pulling in your tummy because you're just going to block the pelvic floor from working and stop yourself from breathing further up. So yep. um, so it doesn't work like that. <laughs> so the core is redefining what the core is. The core is certainly the the whole system, like a little <laughs> a little coke can, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not just the deep abdominals, which was what we what we thought for many years, but we know mm. that it's different now. So we have to change the narration, really. Yeah, it is changing that conversation around it so that both um, from the medical point of view, from doctors, from specialists, as all the way to back to our, our physios that are out there, is that language. And so therefore people don't get the fear behind it as well, that if you have back pain, that you're going to need to brace before you do anything. Because actually that's a, a vicious cycle and you're actually creating a bad habit that can keep you feeling uncomfortable and not feeling stable. So one of the biggest things that actually I teach um, when you're in you know, back pain is actually to smile, which seems really weird and cheesy. Yeah. But actually smiling actually activates the diaphragm and then the pelvic floor can work as well. So you get this nice expansion um, around the core instead of it being um, sucked and pulled in and protecting. It's like we've actually got to learn to expand and stabilize instead of being in fear mode with back. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's a good strategy. I like it. I use uh, yeah. I use a lot the the exhale, the superpower exhale. Yeah. Um, we know that as soon as you're exhaling, that the deep the, the deep system comes on, including the pelvic floor. So exhaling through the exertion, through lifting up the child, for example, or those everyday tasks. And sure, you might need to be a little bit more on certain tasks right but yeah if I'm lifting a pen I don't need to be all the way on but if I'm gonna hear and lift up my desk then absolutely I need to be more on but then afterwards also knowing how to relax it's just yeah. such a key important uh, component like we, we in, in my clinical practice we see so many people who are just so tight and wound up um, mm. you know they can't breathe properly they're all breathing up here and Mm. You, you're never going to get a back to be uh, to be better if you can't use your diaphragm and your pelvic floor and in your abs if, if you're not breathing. <laughs> it's I know. so important. And it's such an epiphany for a lot of my patients and yours when they come in yeah. and they've had chronic pain for chronic back pain for years and years and years. Um, I've got a case of a farmer recently, and he'd been I seen him about two years ago, and. Um, he had pain for years and it was just one of those things that he's put up with. And I was like, the way that you're breathing and protecting through there is the contrib one of the contributing factors. And he's like, really? He took it on board and I've got this farmer that is like breathing down to his belly and stabilizing, getting his posture <laughs> right, stretching the right muscles. And, you know, he's pain free now. But it takes yeah. that time to have an actual mindset shift on the things that we do that will contribute to it. And that's about understanding the anatomy, like showing it and saying, okay, here is the sling. Here is a diaphragm on top, the opposite side, and the opposite sort of um, position. And when you breathe, it's going to work so that the pelvic floor can work co concurrently, so eccentrically and concentrically, to so activate and and, um, and relax. Like, so a, like it's a really piston, exactly. Absolutely. And I mean, how many how many people come in and say, "Oh, I've just got back pain, and it's just niggly, and it's been like that yeah. forever, and I've just put up with it," you know, like. Um, and it's just something which we just shouldn't be putting up with. And, and a lot mm. of the time, as you say, posture, like postural corrections to allow them to breathe. And sometimes that's all we'll do is change posture so people can mm. breathe and let go. Diaphragm starts moving. The back muscles start working with the teammates. And yep. they end up out and they're not like locking down the back in some kind of funky position. <laughs> I mean, I, I see a lot of postnatal women. So they've been with a kid been pregnant or then they've been with a kid on their hip <laughs> and then they yeah. get pregnant again and have another kid on their hip <laughs> and so 
you know, they get stuck in all these funky positions. And that's just one example from a population group. But um, so, so just by bringing your awareness as to how you mm. sit and stand, um, and I know that sounds so simple, but it can be the, the difference between <laughs> like 100%. being out of pain and, and not being in pain. <laughs> so Absolutely. It's a game changer. All that postural positioning, and it's, for me, I had some um, – of patients and people I do my webinars and workshops with, when they realize that they're actually moving into that anterior position, which we have in post pregnancy or with the um, postpartum, um, but also in general in life, if we're in fear and anxiety mode, we shift into our mm. weight forward onto our toes. And so what it means for from the breath point of view and therefore the pelvic floor is we actually don't actually expand into our posterior diaphragm, lower area around the back. Um, it can be it's a small shift and you can do it when you're sitting there. It's just bringing your, your weight back onto your... Um, sit bones and then just notice how your diaphragm at the back expands out and you actually get that stability action of expanding instead mm -hmm. of it being on the toes where you're losing that kind of sucks in and it's like actually oh I can feel that shift quite easily and sometimes that's why people feel different from sitting to standing they go oh like I find it's really hard to do my pelvic floor or my breathing and standing because when I stand my weight's forward and it's like just bring your weight back and they go oh well that's better <laughs> like you said small things it adds up yeah those aha moments isn't it and 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 that's what we know about um like the pelvic floor the same like it will uh, the anterior portion works when you're leaning forward like going off a ski jump you know and the yep. posterior the, the posterior tightness and tension come if you're leaning too far back into your heels so it's it's it really is just posture first and it's what you're doing every day and i think like mm. as physios generally we can get hung up doing you know 10 reps of whatever exercise and do this stretch and this exercise and actually yes you can do that as well as but you, we really need to um, knuckle down as to what you're doing every day that's contributing mm. to that back pain. If you don't change those daily habits, you're going to get the same results, you know. Mm. And, and, and so many of our clients have been to therapist, to therapist, to therapist, and, and you know, been given exercises and they eventually fall off the compliance and <laughs> I'm mm. sick of doing those exercises. And then you say, right, well, what are you doing actually all day, every day? You're walking, you're sitting. You're breathing, definitely. Mm -hmm. You're moving. Um, you're standing. So let's get that right first. <laughs> yeah. And that's that conscious awareness that we just we disconnect from our body. And sometimes we do that for lots of reasons. We don't want to feel what's happening with it. Or we just haven't taken the time to pause and slow down and to prioritize that. So I think you are so right with that. We have to do the things, uh, daily practice, our habits and our behaviors that will contribute to how our pelvic floor feels, how we breathe. But then how we are fatigue, our emotions, our um, hormones. Like there's a whole knock-on effect to all these systems in our bodies. And sometimes it's taking it back to the simple things that set us up for success instead of failure. Totally, 100%. And, and those of us with kids, our kids are watching, mm. right? They, yep. <laughs> they're watching everything. Yeah, everything we're doing. You know, mm. if you're breathing up top your kids are going to breathe up top if you have to pee every 10 minutes your kids are going to think that's normal you know yep. and so I know just as a, a vigilance with um with being a parent it's like it's scary what those children pick up and so if yeah. you've got it right you've got a better chance for your children to um to actually stand and and, and, and stand in a good posture and not accept mm -hmm. pain and not hear us talking about pain is normal you know so yeah. just as an aside <laughs> no but it's a good one because I think even like people that come into the clinic now we see now they often tell the stories of how their family history of back pain and oh my dad had it oh and this had yeah. it and, you know and it was and it was there for these many years so that's the experience I'm expected to have and it doesn't mean that the truth going forward it's just that's their experience they didn't do the things that you can do to change it so you're right it's changing the generations now going forward um, yeah, so it's a big thing, that belief system and how we can interrupt that belief system. And we, 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 with the chronic pain, the chronic pain, it mm. definitely, it, you, you can't really, inter if you can't break through that belief system and try and adjust to uh, the expectations of you're going to be in pain forever, um, yeah. then, of course, the brain is going to perceive you in pain long after your tissue damage is even there, you know. So yeah. so we can correct the mechanical, but, but by addressing the belief system and the, um, the, the, the pathways in the brain who are so good at sending pain signals after 20 yeah. years of back pain, like it's like mm -hmm. a, a signal of a six-lane highway, right? It's such a yeah. big signal. 
And we yeah. want to try and shrink that pathway down to be like a little cycle lane, you know. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you need to have pain, like if you hurt yourself, absolutely, you're still going to be able to get the signal through, but not this mm. really easy, but massive mm. highway to get this like big pain signal through. So mm. part of that is the structural mechanical side that we're talking about but the other half which is has to be addressed in chronic pain is the way we think about our pain and how we um all the all of our thoughts are like about our affirmations oh i'm in pain oh that's gonna hurt oh i yeah. can't do that because it's gonna hurt me um no i can't lift my ch child today it hurts mm. you know mm. all of these things we need to change the narration to be able mm. to um to, to really, really make that a long-standing improvement. And, and I think that's really misunderstood in managing chronic pain. Um, and there's an expectation of clients to come in, you get your hands on them, you know, <laughs> you fix them, they feel great for a day or now. two, <laughs> and then it comes back. And this is why it comes back, because it's mm. not just a, 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 a nerve or a muscle or anything that's, that's bothering them. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, it's 100 percent and that's what we need to be doing yeah. is changing that concept around it. So if we like took a summary of that in many ways is even though we are physical therapists and we work on the body, it is the mindset, it's our emotions, it's our beliefs that actually will dictate. And we know that from the research, you know, a lot of the research is showing people that are going to become chronic uh, can we to do with their past beliefs and behaviors um, mm -hmm. as well as their patterns and movements. And then, and then that will influence how they breathe and if they're stressed, they're not going to need a diaphragm. So there's, a, there's this kind of... Um, cycle that we get stuck in and unless you deal with all the components of holistic health and wellness with back pain then you may not change it but if you want to change it you've got to look global and you've got to think about the things that you can take on control of and mm -hmm. um and be proactive with it and that will change your changing the way that you behave in your thoughts is one of the most key fundamentals and, that, and that's the thing is you can it's not stuck like that like yeah. even a session one-on-one -on -one with a, a therapist like this can completely shift it and then your body will react differently and then you'll start to activate the right muscles and then the core comes on and then there's less fear and the muscles can then start to go oh yeah i can do this i got i got you, you know? yeah yeah i know how to work i remember yep. this from 10 years ago <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah 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 and so it's like getting getting people back to doing the things that they love and that they can mm. do pain free and and focusing on Oh, I can walk for 20 minutes. Great. You can walk for 20 minutes. Do that. Like, let's do that. Yeah. yeah, but I can't ski or I can't, like, climb a mountain. Okay, super. We'll get there, but focus on what yeah. you can do. How good is it that you can walk for 20 minutes, you know? So <laughs> so just being like that, that it's, it's that <laughs> mindset of the shift of what can I do, what can't I do. Okay, I can't do that for now, but I'm gonna. that's my goal. I'm going to work mm. towards it. And, mm. uh, and, okay, this is where I am now. Draw a line in the sand. All the stuff that's behind you, nah, not, it's not even a, a process that you're going to entertain in your head anymore. You're just going to move forward. Start where you are, move forward. <laughs> I just think about how as, as therapists and who we are as people, because of that, we are so upbeat and it's like, yeah, you got this, you got this, like the champion support system <laughs> that people need. And you need someone on your team like that. So sometimes you go to the medical profession or a surgeon or a doctor and they're like, Yes, you're probably going to have this for 20 years. This is you stuck for the rest of your life. Or like, oh, yeah, that looks like a disc. That's quite bad. And it's just like, no, you need someone that is on your team that is like your cheerleader yeah. and got you. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's I had so this important. lady uh, this week who came in and she, um, I don't know if you know, you know the condition fibromyalgia where she had all these painful joints and mm. she was told, it's not rheumatism, it's, it's fibromyalgia and you um, – you, you're going to be sore. It's sore. And, you know, this is a chronic condition. You have to live with it. There's nothing really we can do. And she was like, hell no. <laughs> I'm not doing that. So she, she's like, God, I'm so sore. But she went to the gym and she moved through the pain. And she, you know, she's like, okay, I know I don't have anything serious. I don't have cancer. It's nothing serious. This is just my body reacting to something which nobody knows about. And uh, I'm going to beat this in this positive attitude. And you know what? She's like running marathons now. And, you know, like she's, she dug, she had this crossroad of like, do you go this way and accept that uh, you've been told you're going to be living in pain? Or do you go this way and really try and um, do everything you can to, to get yourself out of that and, and including the whole resetting of the brain. And it's amazing. I'm like, oh, well done. Good job. This is great. <laughs>
but you have to fight for your health and that's everything that goes on i think it's about educating it i don't i don't mean google and, and wikipedia and that sort of stuff for like educating i mean <laughs> you've got to go and figure out the why and your why is going to be very different from somebody else's why it's not a one size fits all and that's one of the problems with all the research and the back pain in the first place is it's just like this is what you have it. This is what you're going to treat it with. And it's like, no, 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 no. We've got like multiple subgroups here, people. We've got to look at it from a big picture and what's going on. If you don't do that, then um, we're not going to get the results. So, yeah, I think just taking power back over back pain. We're going to get it and we're going to kick it back and figure out why. Kick it. <laughs> <laughs> because it is possible. The body wants to be pain-free, right? That, that's the mm. normal state of the body, you know. When mm. we're running around hunting and gathering like those guys, I'm sure they weren't in pain. Otherwise, they'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Would have been eaten by a tiger. So, so you know, it's a natural state to be to be fit and healthy and strong and pain free mm. and continent, and uh, and and not to have to accept that. And if you are experiencing that, then you know, let's see what we can do about it. You know, sometimes yeah. there is obviously you know some big traumas and big tissue tissue damage and things like that, which is a different story. But mm. even that, we're not going to accept that you know the body's a healing machine <laughs> yeah and it's designed to move it's designed to have um yeah kindness and movement that makes it feel good so it's finding that way that you can do it and that's a win which is cool oh i love it we got all excited even though we're like oh we get you know back pain there's another back pain sometimes we see it we're like right these are the simple things posture breathing mindset what else we got lisa movement movement yeah, like, like movement that you can do easily. Yeah, mm. and in those—I mean, even if you went back to those simple things, because and the the pelvic floor and the breath and stuff will come with that. But those things are, are little building blocks along the way that'll help it out. So I think Absolutely. we should leave it at that. Hopefully, it's inspired somebody that's been watching to kind of go right. I can do something a little bit different and look after myself. And if you want to learn more, you can check out uh, Pelvic Solutions and Wanaka. You can work online. You work remotely um, around the world. And I'm the same with the breath effect. So there's lots of ways you can connect and get support or go talk to your local therapist and find the right person that's going to be your cheerleader. Yeah, someone in your quarter, 100%. <laughs> Thanks, awesome. Eva. Thanks, Lisa.